the center you'll see a cover that's covering a battery box. Inside the box are a complete Chevy Volt uh, three batteries from a 2012. That's one, one complete pack. Um, on this side here is a coolant reservoir. It's a the stock Chevy Volt coolant reservoir that's a dual chamber, one housing. Um, on the left hand side you have Dex cool and that's for the batteries. And on the right hand side you have the blue stuff and that's for the Tesla drive unit. Um, connected to the reservoir in the front are two radiators, um, one for each system. The one on the left is for the batteries, the one on the right is for the drive unit. Um, at the bottom there are some AN fittings and they go to manifolds that have uh, fan switches and temperature sensors. Um, and behind, mounted right behind them, are two cooling fans as well. Uh, so if the coolant gets above a certain temperature, the fan switch will kick those uh, cooling fans on, cool down the system. Uh, way down below, if you could see it, is uh, the DC to DC converter for a Chevy Volt. It's right below and behind the radiators with a cooling fan mounted on the front of that. Um, the cooling fan, I don't know if it needs to, but right, for right now it runs all the time uh, through a resistor because the fan was way too powerful for keeping that cool. But um, in the future, it might put uh, a fan switch on there so it only kicks on some of the time. Uh, over here, we have kind of our redo of the systems that are lost when you switch over to electric motor from an ice motor. So we have an electric power steering pump and electric vacuum pump. Power steering pump does the power steering, obvious. The vacuum pump we need for the vacuum brake booster. So we still have power brakes. And since this is a Mercedes from the 80s, all the door locks and climate control also run off of vacuum as well. Um, they're, these are both from a mid 2000s Volvo, which used electric uh, power steering and vacuum pumps. There's also the stock Volvo power steering vacuum sensor, so that way the pump's not running all the time. It fills up the system. Uh, we have the stock reservoir um, from the Mercedes. Uh, and so once everything's filled, it'll cut the pump off and only come on when it needs to refill the system. This important switch here, master disconnect. If we go to work on anything in the high voltage box or wiring, um, that will shut off both battery packs uh, to any of those units. Um, everything here is stock, the uh, master cylinder brake booster and the vacuum hose is running in. Um, you can kind of see on the back of the box here, this is where the high voltage lines come out, positive and negative. And then the third one is linking the second battery pack in parallel to the first battery pack. That's the ground connector. Um, the other battery pack is positive, is hooked in parallel uh, at the switch internally. Uh, let's see, moving on. Oh, also one last thing here. We got a regular battery. So this is what runs all the accessory systems. The DC DC converter provides 13 volts while the car is on, which is like an alternator, keeps this charged. And then this supplies all the power to our cooling fans, our electric cooling pumps, all the lights, the radio, anything that runs off of 12 volts DC. Um, this uh, positive terminal uh, was harvested from the Chevy Volt as well. Um, from the stock battery there. Um, this is the stock Mercedes harness that normally plugs into the starter. That's the um, spot where all the positives meet up on a 300D. And then this little guy here is, I don't know if I could take it off with this cover on, but there we go. This has uh, inline fuses. This is actually from a Mercedes Sprinter van that I harvested, a junk one. And so this is our master power, um, providing power to the ignition circuit, to the um, power steering pump, and to 12 volts all the time to our control box. And that's all fused uh, as well. Uh, normally, I think in the Sprinter, this provides like ignition accessory power and then glow plugs and other uh, high amp draw 12 volt items. In the back of the car, we maintain the uh, the stock trunk, uh, or mostly the stock trunk. I think we lost probably like three or four inches going this way. In a Mercedes 300D, 
the original fuel tank is behind the rear seat and in front of the trunk and is separated by this panel right here. Um, right now there's two Chevy Volt batteries uh, for the second pack that are behind this panel. Um, and they, the profile came out a little bit more, but we were able to kind of modify this panel and reuse it. So we have still plenty of room to put things into the trunk. And then um, the most important part of the trunk is that it's still badged as a diesel car. So that unsuspecting people um, aren't gonna know why it doesn't sound like it's a sewing machine. Okay, here we have the charge port. Um, I took this little cover off the Chevy Volt uh, cover that snaps over the charge port. Figured if you wash the car or something, you don't want moisture getting directly in there. And Mercedes gives you this handy, fancy luxury car um, gas cap holder. So while you're filling, you have some place to put your gas cap. Uh, fits perfectly in there. Um, this is mounted internally with uh, some crazy looking bracket. Um, but yeah, pretty much you just plug in there, um, but don't pour diesel in there anymore. Uh, the other thing is that this piece, I had another feature, if you overfilled and spilled diesel, this port right here was went to a vent tube that went under the car. So that way, you know, fancy people who had Mercedes didn't get their hands messy and all the diesel would drain out. But now we took that out to make room for the batteries. Um, so I put a plug in there uh, so that way if, for some reason, something would spill, it wouldn't just go directly in the trunk onto the batteries. So the right here, this is uh, some weird Chinese, sort of even looks a uh, little Russian Cyrillic, uh, but it's an ammeter gauge and it's hooked up to a shunt in our system. So when you step on the pedal, you draw more amps and that needle goes up. Um, it doesn't have any labels on the back, so I had a 50-50 chance of hooking it up in the correct direction of current. And I hooked up wrong at first. So when I was doing test drives, um, when I'd step on it, the needle would pin to zero. But then when you do regen, which pushes uh, current back into the batteries, it would actually go up and tell you your regen level. Um, over here, we have a toggle switch, and that's for the power steering pump. So if you're on the highway and you're not parking or driving around the city, you don't need to waste electricity running the power steering pump. So convenient place to turn it on and off. And this hole, actually, I didn't drill. Um, this was the original uh, high idle switch. It was like a cable actuated uh, knob that went to the original injection pump. And so when you did a cold start, you would turn it up and that would actually bump up the idle. And then once you were up to running temperature, you'd turn it back down. Um, this hole, which used to be, I think it's to reset the clock that used to be there instead of the ammeter, that's our charge profile switch. So our charge controller has the option, we have it uh, J1772, but we have the option if you're gonna charge not 220, if you're gonna do like 115 or other charge profiles, you can uh, on the fly switch between charge profiles that you have preset. So the one thing we did was uh, this glow plug light, you know, used to be the indicator light that the glow plugs were heating up the cylinder chambers in the 300D motor. Um, in the Tesla application, you have to pre-charge the capacitors in the drive unit. So I thought it'd be nice to reuse the wait to start light um, as the, uh, the pre-charge light. So when you go to start it, start it up, light comes on, pre-charge is happening. And then once the pre-charge finishes, clicks, contactor clicks open and you're ready to drive. selection um there's not really a park there's not a parking pole that holds it so we have to rely on the e-brake um but we want the motor to essentially be in neutral or park or essentially not move when park is selected and neutral is selected um when reverse we go in reverse drive s and l are all the same that's just drive um the way we got the original shifter to work is uh we used the original um, brake light switch um, 
and neutral safety switch. So it's a dual switch that was mounted on the stock transmission of the 300D. When you were in park or neutral, it allowed 12 volts to pass through the switch through an input and output, and that's what allowed the starter to turn. And that's what, when you were in reverse or drive, uh, it would cut that uh, signal and then not allow the starter to turn um, so that you're only starting when you weren't in gear. Uh, reverse, when you're in reverse, that switch also was the reverse light switch. Um, so that provided a 12 volt pass through to the rear uh, clear lights that tell you that you're going in reverse. So we had um, on our Tesla motor controller, we have 12 volt input signals that command either if you're in neutral or reverse or drive, they're three separate wires. So when we were in park, we already had a 12 volt signal for that. Uh, when we reverse, we had a 12 volt signal, but then in drive, we didn't have a 12 volt signal on that switch. So uh, what we created was uh, a second relay and that was fed both by the reverse positive and the park positive and through diodes so that they were separated from each other. Um, and so every time you go into drive, what happens is there's no more positive from reverse or park and that clicks the relay off. But in the normally closed position, we have pass-through current that goes to our controller to the drive signal wire. So it's sort of a, a negative, in the absence of current uh, switches that relay and sends the controller into drive. Um, up here, we just wired in, these are the battery management system display units that you can see if we plug it in. Maybe. There we go. Um, and yeah, originally I wasn't going to have these up here, but I thought it'd be a good idea. So this is where the ashtray was. And um, eventually I'll reconfigure this to have these housed inside and we could pull it open when you want to monitor something or if you need to check on check on something. 